Asbjorn Eriksson is the sole reason Aid is who he is in this world. He had taken him in when many others would have turned their backs or worse. He had brought him from a runaway slave to a feared general, counsellor and famed Jarl of a kingdom carved out with the help of his own axe. He had followed Asbjorn to this region as a young warrior amongst a group of talented individuals that Asbjorn relied upon, Aid, the Iron Fist, Talir, the Shadowed Puppet Master, Kier, the Coin Counting Fingers, and Gnar, his Silk Glove. They had served with loyalty and skill and had been rewarded with tracts of lands and titles. Aid's eldest daughter Halla was even married to Sigbjorn, eldest son of the king and heir to Safirland. They had joined their families in blood. Aid was Asbjorn's man through and through, there was no doubt about it. But recently, as Asbjorn had aged, he had become less interested in the righteous conquest of Christian lands and more preoccupied with the stabilisation of the realm and inevitable destabilisation succession. Asbjorn held direct control of vast swaths of inland territory. Asbjorn was also a caring father who wanted each of his sons to be provided for should he pass. Therefore, when he eventually was taken to Valhalla, his lands and titles would be divided up accordingly. This worried Aid, and he had brought this up on numerous occasions to Asbjorn. Let the young and ambitious sons make their own way in this world. It's the natural way of things. But Asbjorn's response was simple. Why would I let my sons suffer when these lands have room for us all? Aid had prepared his own son for succession. The lands of Benevento would be his, and all around it would be his to rule as Jarl. But Aid was not content with what he had. He was old, but not dead. He would not rest on his laurels when there was a prize so tempting, so close. The grandest prize of Italy, Rome. The Christians think it untouchable, divinely protected by their nailed god. However, the Christians may be naive and incompetent, but Aid would be a fool to underestimate them again. His first invasion of the peninsula almost ended in failure, were it not for the timely intervention of his king. He had been learning of the great empire that grew here, and of its downfall. The papal city would fall to a barbarian horde once again, and Aid would claim victory, but he knew he needed Asbjorn's forces to succeed. He, Aid Fionson, would declare war on the Pope, on Christianity itself, and Asbjorn, a champion of Asatru, would be bound to join. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Raiders of the Adriatic, and it's going to be a big one today. We're finally going to go for the Pope. We're going to go for Rome and the Papacy. Your aid has forced our hands in this a little bit, as I didn't even realise in the last episode that I was going back over it, that he had attacked the Papacy and actually taken a county within it, which has left the Pope insanely weak. Insanely, insanely weak. 200 men. I don't think we're ever going to have a better chance than this to take down the Christian Catholic faith. We're going to do it as Jarl, as Born. Hopefully this will make him a living legend and maybe a religious icon. He's 61 now and I'd love to be able to just take down the Pope or take the Pope captive in Asbjorn's lifetime. And we don't know how much longer that's going to be. So it's time to do it now. So let's go for the papacy. So we have Pope. Pope Callistus II. Declare war. Holy War for the Duchy of the Papacy. Declare war. Declared war on Pope Cassilis II. Now, obviously, we do have allies and such, but we're not going to call them into the war. We do actually have Sweden. Now, it's going to cost us a lot of prestige, and we're not going to need them, but I feel like we should call them in just for, just for the fun of it. The fact that we can then have another Viking king from the north attacking the papacy together as Rome falls to the Viking heathens. You know what? It's only 350 prestige and we've got a ridiculous amount of prestige. Let's call them in. Why not? They're probably not even going to get there in time, but let's do it. And we will raise all of our armies over here, right next door to the papacy. We're not going to need our holy, war, uh, holy order, but here we go. Raise all of our armies here. 
Going to be a lot of manpower, of course. We've got 6,000 men that we can now call. And King Heising of Sweden has joined the war. It'd just be cool to have the Swedish coming down. They're probably not going to get here on time, but... It doesn't... I don't think... Surely, when you attack the Pope, surely the Christian kingdoms are going to come to his aid. Italy, East Francia, surely. Or will... I, I don't... I've never took the Pope down in this game in CK3 yet. What's going to happen? Will... I'm guessing it will have to be re-reformed re the uh, the religion. I would have assumed it's going to be insane to see what happens to Western Europe with the papacy fallen. Let's march on to Rome. Six thousand Viking warriors marching into the city of Rome. You you never would believe it. Insane, absolutely awesome. Let's combine those armies together. We want Asbjorn leading the charge for Rome. Now, I'm guessing this is going to be an insanely big siege, surely. 17 months, yes. And a child of my dynasty. Awesome. Hala, the daughter of my marshal, Jarl Aid, has given birth to a daughter. Oh, they're, they're popping the kids out now. Old um, Sigbjorn and Hala. And it is another daughter, Geirid. Um, Hala, Jorvel, Hala. Do you know what? We could call her Hala after her mother. Why not? May you grow strong and wise, Hala. Here we go, 6,000 men. Are we losing men here? Yes, we are. We could station besiegers and move the armies around to these other ones, but no, we'll just stay sieging Roma. While that's happening, and preaching unorthodox doctrine, okay, so we've had someone spreading the wrong religion throughout our lands, which is annoying. I'm just going to pause and have a look what's going on elsewhere. There was a few things that I did notice that I want to point out. Denmark has taken most of southern Italy. Iceland actually owns some, which is interesting. But the Isles kingship is actually only a Jarl. He's not formed the Kingdom of the Isles yet. He's doing insanely well. He's took all of western Scotland and northern and eastern Ireland. He owns Dublin. There's just one region that... One earldom that hasn't been taken yet. Whether that will be taken by him, I assume it will. I think he is at war with Alba. So it's interesting what's going on in the British Isles. They're also becoming very Norse. So the Norse faith is spreading throughout the world. Wales is doing insanely well. Gwynedd has all been taken. They've just got to take Powys. Probably saying that completely wrong. Amir will let me know. I know he will. Um, Sweden doing well as well as Denmark. Have we seen what's going on? Most of Western Europe is the same as before. Poland is split into still a couple of areas. So it would be interesting if... Uh, the Kingdom of Poland would be formed, maybe. We have obviously got the several kingdoms in this area. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if some of those, Lithuania maybe. Um, and then you've obviously got the massive Southern Baltic Empire, which would be interesting to see what could go on there. Other than that, not much else going on. I'm surprised that more of Russia hasn't been formed yet. That That is a surprise. Rurik didn't seem to do a lot, whereas normally he seems to take an insane amount of land. The Middle East is pretty much as you were as well. But we're actually, why are we losing so much prestige at the moment? Very annoying. We're so close to the living legend. Sure, if taking Rome can't make you a living legend along the Norse men, then I don't know whatever will. Um, as Lorg comes of age, I'm proud to see my daughter no longer as a child, but as an adult with sufficient tutelage. Even a child that has displayed little natural inclination towards careful planning, such as As Lorg, can come to truly understand its uses. Now it's harder to say, however, everything that is task of her is done by others before she gets to it. Oh, so she's laser. But she does become an elusive shadow. She's good, 14 in trees. She's not done too bad, I wouldn't say. That's not bad. Not bad at all. She's obviously in the southern Italian lands. So once we take the papacy, we all know it's going to be Duke Guy's lands next. Form these together. Duke Guy will fall after the papacy. And there's a thousand papacy troops. I'm guessing the Pope surely got a lot of wealth. But he actually hasn't, which is interesting. Um, Count Rodolf and Aslog got married. Perfect, yes. That's who we landed in the last episode. My spy master has come to me with um, a discovery. He is certain that my master of ships, Count Gunvald, is scheming against my son, Aslak. Are you now, Gunvald? Why are you doing that? Is your son better yet? No, not yet. That's a shame. Um, throw him in jail. Let the trade to be known to all. Hmm, he'll hate us for that. He already hates us enough as it is. Um, Count Gunvald is exposed an agent in the murder scheme. Gunvald goes free. Throw him in jail. We'll throw him in jail. Sorry, Gunvald. And then we'll see if we can um, actually ransom you. But we will get a new Master of Ships, considering that you are trying to go against us. Let's go for Count Reffa, who is He's actually a very decent commander. 
Um, fleet maintenance, trade contracts, raid plan. No, mate, we'll stay with the uh, trade contacts. But let's have a now have a look into our... Oh, I hate when it does that. Oh, we can increase our tribal authority to level 3, which we'll definitely do. We've got more than enough prestige to spend on that. But yeah, let's go to our prisoners. And we will ransom him for 50 gold. He'll learn his lesson. We get some gold out of it. He gets a bit of a sting and a slap on the wrists. How goes the siege in Rome? Pretty good. Pretty good. We're halfway through. It's going to take a long time, of course. We've got eight months remaining. Um, some of our lands under siege from the Pope. That's fine. Holy Order hired. Yorm's Vikings has been called by Jarl Gunnar of Croatia. Okay, so he's using our Holy Order, Gunnar. And what? Is his wife pregnant yet? Not yet, but who's he at war with? Defending against war against the tyranny of Jarl Gun oh my god again this guy why does he not just remove this guy from power he needs to just remove this guy from power revoke his lands entire hopefully after that war he'll be able to because he needs to just take care of that guy and get rid of him I really hope that we take the Pope captive because oh sacrificing the Pope to the gods would be absolutely awesome the fall of Rome, the fall of the Vatican. Oh, this is going to be so, so epic. 62 years old now, Asbjorn. I still don't think we have any more concubines, do we, unfortunately? A faction targeting has, has disbanded. I was planning on taking some of these lands in the Balaton in this episode, but with what aid, with aid attacking the Papacy, I thought, well, we've got to do it. It's got to be Asbjorn. I can't have aid or somebody else beating us to it. It's got to be Asbjorn that takes down the Pope. Or at least us. It's got to be us that does it. We're making so much gold. I don't even know what to do with it. Um, I'm just going to let it keep stocking up. And then when we do finally go feudal, we can spend a hell of a lot of it improving all our trade routes in and around the Adriatic. Well, the Mediterranean now is expanding. And here comes the huge army of Sweden. So we're now going to have 11... Over 11,000 Viking warriors in and around Rome just sacking the land. I'm hoping that him and his army chase down the Pope. I, I doubt the Pope's leading the army. He's probably hiding in there. Oh, they've called up one more man. I don't see what he's going to do. Yep, and Bjorn, Iron, uh, Bjorn Ironside's son has slaughtered the Pope's army. All we now need to do is wait for the papacy to fall, which is going to be very, very soon. And Queen Hermina converted to culture. Queen Okay, the Queen of Aquitaine. Queen... What? 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 Is she married to the King of Aquitaine then? Yes. Ah. And she's actually converted to Norse culture. Interesting. She's still a Catholic, but interesting. Very interesting. Let's wait for it. Three months remaining until Rome falls. We've got one current... Um, can imprison three people. We'll leave that for now. We can call our Polish ally in, but there's no point. The only thing I'm looking forward to when Asbjorn dies, I really don't want him to die, but the one thing I'm looking forward to is losing that greedy trait so that we can actually give more lands to people. Because it's so annoying that we have to hold all those lands because I'd rather have people landed. But then I am worried about losing his dread, to be honest. Really worried about that. Um, a child of my dynasty, Asta, and... Uh, my tax collector, Sophia, has given birth to a daughter. Since the little one is part of the Ericsson dynasty, she should be blessed with a good name. She's married to the giant. Has she got the giant trait? No, hunchbacked. Ugh, Quasimodo? Uh, no, we'll leave it as Asta. Why not? How much longer? How much longer in the siege? Two months remaining. Not long at all. 50 odd days until the papacy falls. Uh, a notable guest has arrived. Dara, um, who are you? A Russian who's home homely and drunkard. Um, do you have claims to lands? Chieftain of Turov and the High Chieftain of Turov, which is where? It's way, way up north somewhere, isn't it? In Russia. Yeah. It's a hell of a long way away, so there's not much that we can do to help you with that, I'm afraid. We just need to finish our siege. Please capture the Pope. Please, please, please capture the Pope. If he's not here, where else would he be? He's got to be in the Vatican, surely. He's got to be in Rome. 15 days remaining. Cracker comes of age. I'm proud to see my daughter Cracker no longer as a child, but as an adult. For the longest time, I was hoping that good tutelage would be enough to teach Cracker the intricacies of warfare. I was naive. She has only developed a basic understanding of the subject. They grow up fast. Yeah, she's got 15, Marshall. It could be worse. 
We've unlocked a new martial lifestyle perk. Perfect. We are now a strategist. So we've filled two trees. Wow, we've got a whole tree there to fill out. So I don't see us filling out three trees. I'd be very, very surprised if we did. But at least we've now got strategist. And just in case there's people who are new to the game and don't know what that is, we'll check out what we do again from um, the strategist um trait we gain one diplomacy free marshal enemy fatal casualties plus 25 percent and cross water without advantage penalties yes which is awesome an awesome 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 trait for us for us to have and tolia erksman and clacker erickson are now married is he the heir oh that's aids um son not his heir it's his what do it is his heir no it's not his heir it's one of his younger sons is this one landed no, I think this is one of the ones who aren't landed. Okay, that's cool. At least it keeps our alliance with aid. And the siege for Rome has been won. We have captured a prisoner as well. Um, ransom him for oh, for a favour. No, we'll just put him in our house arrest for now, considering he's a child. Or oh, we gain stress for that. Oh, no, 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 then. But we have won that siege, so we just need to now siege. I thought, surely, if you'd have took Rome, you'd have took everything, but apparently not. So we are going to have to take a little bit more land, but I don't think that's going to take too long. Unless we can just kill these three men, and that gives us enough war score, just because we haven't actually been joined in battle yet. A good asset true. I am known as a deeply pious man. Surely my devotion to Odin should be good for something in this life too, and not only the next. There are a number of people who would do well to be reminded that I am in the All-Father's good graces. My dedication should be shouted from the towers. I have been too lenient with the temple this year. We gain gold. Um, the Godar are already in awe, awe of me. Pious liege for 10 years. Yeah, we'll just go for that one. We don't need any more prestige and stuff. So We've managed to capture an enemy combatant as well. I'm guessing we slaughtered all three men, yeah? I'd be surprised if not. Let's get this barony under siege then and end this war 91 percent. i can't believe that it didn't ah ha there's their main host a thousand men they must have just hired them or something surely let's chase them down oh and another 700 he must be hiring troops 11 and a half thousand men 100 percent. the war is over and force demands the papacy has fallen. Victory to the evil King Asbjorn. May your humours rot in your living body. You're a much greater foe than I imagine. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. So be it. So what happens with the papacy now? Surely it ends and gets destroyed. Surely? Does it? Does it not? I don't know. Disband all of our men. Let's see what happens. Surely something's got to happen. Surely the religion must end. We can create the Duchy of Latium. Which we will, of course, do. You can create the... Oh, yeah, the Yardum of Latium. That's fine. Uh, we hold too many duchies. The Yardum of Farlaland, which is Bosnia, isn't it? Um, so we do need to give some of those away. We are going to have to sort those out. But first, I want to see if it, anything actually does happen with the papacy. No? Ah, here we go. Crusader Kings. Rome, the city of St. Peter, and the very seat of the papacy itself, has fallen to infidels. In response, the Pope in exile, His Holiness, Pope Castillus, has declared his intention to forge an alliance with Christian lords in order to reclaim the Eternal City. This could be the beginning of unprecedented Christian aggression. Ty, protectors all Christian faiths, have now access to Crusades. Oh, now this is going to be interesting. At least we've got that alliance with Sweden. Right, I think... Um, We've got to keep Rome for ourselves, haven't we? We've got to. You can't give Rome away. So what we are going to do is land one of our custom courtiers instead. Um, there was another one that did need landing after the last episode, wasn't he? Where is he? Here he is. Jungvar, we will grant you the title of... We'll give you some of the lands over here. We'll give you... We could give you the chiefdom of Lyca. What else we've we got? The Chiefdom of Zagreb. Um, Chiefdom of Dulka. Where's that? Is that down south? Down south here, yes. Grant title. You can have that Chiefdom. Clear all notifications. We are still over the domain limit, so we can now transfer you to Jarl Halfstand as a vassal, which is going to make him happier. It does give us stress, though, which is really annoying. I don't... Oh, it's so annoying that it gives us stress by granting 
a vassal away to the rightful lord. And we still we still hold too many duchies, so we are going to have to give away. Let's have a look. We've got the Duchy of Fiala Land, um, which is this huge, huge one here. Who do we actually have ruling land in there? We've got the Serbian Lord, haven't we? We've got a Croatian Lord who has converted. Perset, we do have Gunvald. But we also have Count Refa. Um, hmm, let's have a look at if we go on to the duchies again. It's a huge, huge, huge duchy, that the Duchy of Bosnia. Um, who do we give it to? Got a lot of lords landed in this land. A lot of lords. Gunvald only has one son. Refka has two sons. I think it's got to... It's going to have to be Refka, isn't it? But do, he doesn't like us. But then I don't, I don't think Gunvald does either. No, neither of them like us. Um, why don't you like us, Refka? Because you're feudal and weird. Why are you feudal? Have you not actually converted? My ask, you've actually not converted. Has Gun Gunvold hasn't either. Can we demand him to convert? If he accepts, we'll give him the land then. Whoever's going to convert to the right faith, we will give the land to. If he accepts, if he's willing to do it. To the wisdom of your faith, but I hope you understand what a long winding path it is from the darkness into the light. Perhaps if you promise to support me in whatever way, way I need, the journey would be an easier one. I will not bargain for your soul. So I'm guessing he's not going to convert either. So we're going to have to give away... We didn't really have any other Yaldums, did we? I'm not giving away the Papacy. Definitely not. I don't really think we had anyone else in these lands. There is a bit of land that we own in there. Still. Do you know what? We could just give it to... Uh, we could give it to the Serbian guy. He owns most of it anyway. And then again, no, he actually owns... Yeah, he owns half of it anyway. We could give it to him. Considering Gunvald is not willing to convert. I think he actually... I think he actually does not mind us either. I think he actually has a decent... A decent opinion of us. Yes, plus 20. Right, we will... Can we get you to convert? There's 4% he might accept. Oh, I, oh, this is so annoying and hard to decide. You know what? Forget it. Grant title to Gunvold. The Yaldum of Bosnia. He is in the border of that, isn't he? Yes, grant title. Perfect. Hopefully it's not stressed us out because we had to give one away. We had no choice. We need a council position. We need a master of ships. Um, let's go for... Hmm, we have got Count Radulf who... Yeah, we'll go with him. Can we actually have a seer yet? We still don't have anyone. And we've still got one plot of land that we need to give away. But we need to get some of those other custom courtiers back. So I am going to keep that until we do move two of those others that haven't come back yet. And we can land those guys instead. Um, we've got a few two champions. Well, we'll have some of those once they come in anyway. Uh, we're first in line to inherit the county of Dulcia. That's fine. Right, on pause. How strong are Italy? 3,000 men compared to our 5,900. It's time. Declare war for the duchy of... Where is it? Which one was it? It was this one, wasn't it? Spolito. Yes. Confirm. Duke Guy. I'm coming for you, my friend. Asbjorn is coming for you. Let's... Yep, we'll raise all back over here. We're right next door to it then. Can we hire the Holy Order? We can't, unfortunately. But I think we'll have more than enough manpower to take care of this anyway. An enemy ally joins the war. The Duchy... Who are you? Ah, Spain. Well, Astorios. Interesting. He's only got up 217 men. Well, you're not going to make a difference, are you, my friend? We can always call Sweden in if we have to. Ah... And the King of Alba, a thousand men. Yeah, you're not much to worry about either, my friend, I don't think. 
and Loki comes of age. I'm proud to see my son no longer as a child, but as an adult, with sufficient tutelage, even a child that has displayed little natural inclination towards dramatic influence, such as Loki, can come to truly understand it. A true silver tongue, he could sway the opinion of counts and kings alike. When he speaks, the court listens. Awesome. 17 diplomas there. Awesome. It looks like we may finally have our replacement for if if when Gunnar dies. Where was Gunnar at war for? Oh yes, it was um, one of his vassals, wasn't it, declaring war against him. How is he doing in that war? Oh, plus 99%. He's won. Awesome. Hopefully he'll imprison that lord and re get rid of him and re um, reland Rognor Blood Axe. Right, we've got a thousand men. Let's march straight on to, I think that was part of the county anyway, so let's get that under siege. We're going to have to meet the Italians in war, aren't we? Several times. But if we can get the land that we actually want to take under our control, that should work in our favour. Do you know what? We will call Sweden into this war, because we've got more than enough prestige, and those extra 5,000 men will just help us finish this war off a little bit quicker. And he has joined us. Perfect. Right, let's uh, station... Can we... Oh, we're not actually in a siege here. Um, there we go. That's the barony that we want to go for. And we'll station some besiegers. Field of battle. The cries of fighting men. The splatter of red blood. The clashing of weapons everywhere. I scream and shout in my dream, unaware of my surroundings, of who is my friend and who is my enemy. Swinging my sword without regard. Lost in my battle rage and the hellish terror that is battle. Die, die, we gain six stress. Well, that's annoying because we love battle. But we are now a living legend, which is awesome. We just need to become a religious icon, which I thought we would have done when we destroyed the papacy, but apparently not. So we'll just concentrate on these two areas for now. And here comes the Italian armor. Perfect. Let's go meet them in battle. 5,400 men will be more than enough to face the Italians. I know for a fact we're going to have more than enough manpower there. So let's just march south and take care. Ah, they're going to march onto there are they where are they where are they going to we'll meet them there instead then and they're now splitting their forces but we should get to them in time a loss of interest Orbjorn has been harboring a secret affection for Alvor for some time. However, when he finally confessed his feelings, Alvor responded harshly. The rejection seems to have made Orbjorn wary of any kind of attraction whatsoever. Who is Alvor? Our granddaughter, his cousin. She does have the hail trait though. Does he want to... Right, let's have a look. What have we got? One should not dabble in matters of lust. He becomes chaste, vengeful, stubborn. He's going to become chased. But considering he loves her, then it would seem. Should we just... Could marry... Oh, we've got Alvor Toki. She's Norse. And she's got the pretty trait. Which could be interesting. Let's have a look. Who else have we got that we could marry him to? There could be other... This is the one that he likes. Alvor, our granddaughter. Let's marry them. Considering that he's grown affection for her. Why not? Let's betroth them. Incest is Wincest, it's only cousins, it'll be okay. That meant nothing in medieval times, did it? Let's slaughter the Italian Queen's armour. Would be awesome if we could capture a valuable hostage. And our champion ripped the head off of King Arding. Oh, wow. wow. Um, Gunvold has just ripped the head off of the King of Scotland, I think. And we have captured... Your forces took Queen Emmergaard's son and heir, Guy, hostage. Perfect, we've won the war that easy. Um but was it the King of Was it the King of Scotland, well Alba, that he's just beheaded? King Dommel, his father was No, it wasn't him. Then was it the king Must have been his father. No, who was it then? It was a king. Maybe it was the King of Italy. Yes, the king of Italy had his head ripped off by Jarl Gunvold. Ah, what a kill. What a kill indeed. Right, Um, what could we ransom you for? 11 gold. Not worth it. We can end the war. Yes. End force demands. To the brooding king Asbjorn, may your humours rot in your living body. You are a much greater foe than I imagine. Nor does one enter this bloodshed. I will comply with your demands. Do we keep him as prisoner as well? Um, Chieftain Kukuma is not swayed. That's fine. Have we got Duke Guy's art? No. Oh, I wanted Duke Guy to be 
under us. I wanted Duke Guy so that we could get revenge. I was hoping he would become our vassal. Never mind, disband all of our men and we've took an insane amount of central Italy now, which is awesome. Is there not any more duchy? Well, we've already got that duchy, haven't we? But we can get, we can type, we can usurp the duchy of, ah, <laughs> Duke Guy down there now, are you? We can actually, we can usurp, anointed kingdom of Romagu title can be, we can usurp his title. Let's get some more revenge upon Duke Guy. We've got the gold to do it and we'll gain prestige. Sorry, Duke Guy. Oh, what a shame. And we can also create this kingdom, which we won't do. We won't do that. We don't want another kingdom until we have a, um, what's it called? Until we have an empire, which we won't have for a while yet. Um, we are holding too many duchies. Again, though, we've got the Yardum of Latimia and the Yardum of Spilito, which is the one that we will give away to somebody but i don't you know we could give it to her could give it you but i'd rather land people in the lands for now so what we'll do is we'll end this episode and then i can get our four well move those two custom courtiers back bring in two new custom courtiers which will be four which we can then land to get us back to six so there'll be four custom characters landed um, what a great episode. Wow, what a lot that we have managed to achieve. We've nearly got as much Italian land as we've got Balkan land, which is awesome. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode as much as I have. Please don't forget to like and comment down below. If so, it will really help me out and help the channel grow, and I'd really, really appreciate it. And also join the Discord server. I'd love to have you there, and hopefully I'll see you all very soon for the next episode.